The rather low quality of the plastic and rubber elements of the cooling system is partly offset by the availability of cheap fittings and hose heads on sale. So there is not so much negative from the low quality of parts. You just need to monitor and change them at the first signs of leaks, you don't have to cut them on parts from disassembly. The hoses themselves are more expensive, but they last longer. By the age of 10, the plastic of fittings and small fasteners on many machines is breathing its last, but rubber elements usually do not require replacement if they have not been frayed due to unsuccessful assembly after the crooked hands of a car service. The elements of the pipes on the hot side of the system and the hoses to the heating system mainly suffer. The main radiator is quite successful, but over time, the honeycombs near the condenser crumble, and then the main radiator begins to suffer, its lower part turns into a skeleton of a small area. And the radiator is also afraid of even the smallest pebbles, so the owners massively put nets in the bumper, despite the fact that this increases the thermal load of the engines in the hot period and may even be one of the causes of scuffing on gasoline engines. And under the hood on the Optima is very dirty. Even the solid protection of the engine compartment does not save much, aerodynamics are heartless. Installing hood and deflector seals on the radiator, locker extensions under the bumper only slightly improves the situation. It was as if the car was not designed for places where there are a lot of puddles and mud. The problem of weak catalytic converters is definitely present. A fairly high exhaust gas temperature, EGT, lean mixtures in all modes and the low quality of the catalyst matrix material do their job. At the first signs of chipping, it is worth replacing the catalyst unit, or better yet, installing the repair converter further from the exhaust. An exhaust option in this design is available for LNG engines of the line. There is an opinion that engines have too high EGT, and it greatly depends on the gasoline used. Cars were noticed in another sin, these are cracked fuel tanks. The filter here is made in the form of a mesh on the fuel intake, so it clogs easily, and the dirt from it dissolves in gasoline. At the first sign of problems with injectors on all gasoline engines, if the tank does not puff when you open the neck, you should seriously check its integrity. The majority of potential Kia buyers in Russia choose this model because it has a naturally aspirated engine and automatic transmission. You already understand everything about the boxes, and even though the motors are simple by modern standards, they cannot be called truly reliable. Often it's just a time bomb in a beautiful body. Fortunately, they are relatively simple to repair, and the essence of the problems is known. In the near future we will publish a comprehensive article on motors, but for now let's talk about the main nuances. Atmospheric 2.0 engines on Russian Optima are either Theta 2 series with the G4KD index or G4NA of the new family. The new series is newer, the motors of this line appeared mainly after restyling. 2.0 G4KH turbo engines also belong to Theta 2 and are found mainly on imported American cars, they were not officially sold here. 2.4 engines are usually G4KE again of the Theta 2 series. Occasionally there are models for the American or Korean market with direct injection. They differ from KD in the crankshaft and piston stroke, the presence of an oil water heat exchanger in the system and an oil pump. Otherwise, the units are extremely similar. So many new Optima owners go through denial and acceptance and then overhaul of Theta 2 motors. Clubs pouring strictly SAE 20 oil with a branch in the nearest service for replacing crankshafts and communities of those who generally deny all problems are permanently relevant. The general rule is simple. The 2.0 often lifts the piston, but since the liners are cast iron, the process is greatly extended over time. Accordingly, the solution to the problem is not very urgent. In the case of 2.4, the risks are slightly higher since a drop in oil pressure often results in a lifted crankshaft, a broken connecting rod, and a fist of friendship. And even with a mild development of events, the solution is quite expensive. There are no repair sizes for the crankshaft and liners. The services do not strive to master hardening with high-frequency currents, HFC, for shafts ground to repair size and the selection or production of repair liners for such machines. With a piston group, everything is a little simpler. There are no repair sizes either, 
but non-original pistons and rings are available even in the plus 0.75 micron version, including from Mitsubishi B1 engines, or the block is sleeved and sharpened to nominal. Both options have been tested and are working. The motors are very technologically advanced and simple, so even an average service can perform repairs with acceptable quality. For 2.4 engines, it is highly recommended to install an oil pressure gauge or modify it by installing a simple pump from 2-liter versions. In addition to the troubles described above, motors get little from the owners. By the age of 11, the main list of breakdowns is where of the phase regulator valves and their knocking when hot or cold, leaks through the throttle gasket, injector rings and through the adsorber due to a broken valve or cracks in its body. Change wear out after about 200,000 miles. This can be detected by the characteristic diesel sound or by eye, by the sagging of the chain. To do this, you need to remove the valve cover since it is easily dismantled here. The new series was supposed to be better than its predecessors, but something went wrong. Created on the basis of a more compact 1.6 engine block, they inherited all the sores of the 2.0 and 2.4 Theta 2 series, as they say, in one bottle. Here the piston group and crankshaft liners lift. With repair dimensions and recovery technology, there are no differences from the big brothers. Sleeve, non-original repair pistons, crankshaft polishing save those who are unlucky. After 120,000, bullies are quite common and degrade much like on Theta. Modification of the new series to prevent scuffing is limited to the installation of reinforced liners with a polymer coating at the first sign of loss of oil pressure. There is no reinforced oil pump for engines of this series, so prevention is limited to careful monitoring of engine temperatures and the use of oils with a viscosity well above SAE 20-30. There are also high flow 0W40 oils if you belong to that group of users who are afraid of too viscous oil at startup. There are very few diesel Optima with a 1.7 D4FD engine of the U-Series in Russia, but they have performed well. Bosch fuel equipment, a low degree of forcing, reliable engine mechanics, good start at any temperature, good enough warm-up in winter for a diesel engine of this size. Of the minuses, only the very active operation of the exhaust gas recirculation system and the associated intake pollution up to the breakdown of the swirl flap system. Diesel particulate filters burn out well even at low loads, which is very valuable for cars with urban operation. And yet, problems with clogged particulate filters, back pressure and errors on them are among the most common troubles. The resource of the timing chain is moderate, often the chains do not reach 200,000, but the replacement price is low not much more than that of gasoline engines, usually less than 20,000 with work. The engine is in demand in neighboring Belarus. The owners consider it a very good option. So far, the main enemy of external panels is paint chips. The coating is quite thin and delicate, especially on white specimens. Chips form easily unless the car is pasted over with a film or filled with ceramics. Particular attention should be paid to the hood, door edges, and arches. The leading edge of the roof suffers minimally. Inspect the area where the door handles are located. Both banal scratches and chips under the mount are possible here. The contact point between the mudguard and the front fender is also problematic. At the same time, inspect carefully all the edges of the body. The outer panels are crumpled regularly and not always as a result of an accident. The metal is soft and thin. Even a blow by the door of a neighboring car can cause a crease in the wrong place of the panel. If the car has mother-of-pearl paintwork or under a zero paint, then the chips are unlikely to bloom quickly, and it will be more difficult to scratch it. But it will be extremely difficult to paint it like it came from the factory. The color is not correct not only the first time, but also the fifth time, despite the fact that the price of any repair immediately skyrockets. From the unpleasant, if the chip is to the metal, then it blooms with pleasure. It is worth a little delay with the repair. A month or two, and the chances that it is possible to remove the defect qualitatively and for a long time are greatly reduced. Serious paint cracks and creases should be repaired immediately. The middle of the outer panel straightens as easily as it bends, but if the paint is cracked and water gets on the steel, then red marks will appear in a couple of days. 
The owners unanimously claim that the cars do not rot at all, and there are no weak points, but for some reason, accidental chips on the wheel arches and trunk lid are usually repaired by cleaning the panel both outside and inside from layered rust. In general, for the generally good condition of the bodies, one must first of all express gratitude to the dealers. In the fat times, they were extremely loyal to the owners and repainted even 10-year-old cars with traces of corrosion under warranty. But now there is already a mass of cars that do not go to dealers, and the 10th anniversary is already behind us. Apparently, in the absence of fanatical care and prompt elimination of paintwork problems in the official dealer service, the number of paintwork problems will grow rapidly. From the outside, the Optima usually looks good. If she was not beaten and looked after, then outwardly the cars look, if not 100%, but 80% of the ideal. But on the lift to inspect cars is no longer so fun. Many, many shallow dry corrosion on all surfaces not covered with a rubber bitumen mixture and loose rust on the subframes and parts of the exhaust system look unpleasant for an unprepared person. And this is found in most cars from St. Petersburg and Moscow, which have not undergone additional anti-corrosion treatment. In general, there is nothing overly terrible in this state. This is typical for most budget cars, in which the bottom panels are not protected with a rubber bitumen mixture and are not filled with anti-corrosive, covering only the most vulnerable seams. Russian Optima are slightly treated with anti-corrosive, but just a little. In the arches, the anti-corrosive coating is sprayed on top of the lockers, which can be seen from the imprint on the arch. On the bottom, its layer is thin and easily torn off upon contact with the ground. It simply does not exist under the plastic door sill, just as it does not exist at the vulnerable internal joints of the arches at the trailing arm of the rear suspension. If it is dirty under the lockers, then there will be plenty of rust, and all open places where anti-corrosive has not been applied are simply covered with an almost continuous layer of it. Such a state of the body demoralizes inexperienced car owners, the contrast with the ceremonial external state is usually great, and thoughts and fragility of everything that exists appear. The most problematic places from below are the area around the fuel tank, the inner edge of the front sill and the inner edges of the arches in front and behind, the locker studs and the arches. All this is exacerbated by the small thickness of the metal. Certainly not power elements, but the engine bay mudguard appears to be made of the same thin steel as the fender. As a result, even on a non-old car, you can stumble upon a through hole. Simply due to the fact that the fasteners damaged the paintwork on one side, and on the other hand, the seam was not completely covered with sealant, and dirt accumulated there. This happens in the front arches much more often than we would like. In the rear arch, the situation is better. There are no overlapping metal joints without sealant, as well as fasteners on the inner surface. Yes, and in the trunk is obviously drier than in the engine compartment. Cars also have enough minor problems on the body. Under the door frame seals on this generation, rust could be found even on a one-year-old car. But she won't be out anytime soon. When replacing a windshield, you can sometimes find that the primer has moved away from the frame metal along with the paint, and under it there is a thin layer of dry rust. It is especially unpleasant if this occurs along the upper edge, near the longitudinal seams of the roof panel. In most cases, there is nothing critical, but through corrosion of mudguards and rust on the seams of power elements occurs, such machines should be avoided. The main repairs on the body repairing the bumpers after the winter, they are too low. Yes, windshields are soft and crack easily. Not as strong as the Ford Focus 3, but quite often cracks radiate from the lower edge of the glass. The headlights are mostly overridden, the time to replace the lenses is just coming. Rear LED lights after restyling may suffer from oxides on the wiring, but the difficulty is only in opening the case, it is nominally non-separable, but no one has cancelled the Dremel. There is only one door handle with keyless access, by the way, quite reliable, and to put such on all doors, and not just the drivers, you have to try. Cable windows, the door mechanism is assembled on a plastic shield, something like the Volkswagen Passat B5. It doesn't unravel very quickly either. Otherwise, serious troubles from this side cannot be expected, unless the contacts in the door control unit burn out. 
In the mirror folding mechanism, the motors are rather weak, the drive regularly jams, and the anthers of the mechanism are frankly weak. Bulkhead cleaning is needed every few years. If the cars have a sunroof, then worries are added. The grease in the guides is very sour, and the drive is weak and also requires regular cleaning. Of the little things, the lining of the trunk opening is cracking due to ice, the larvae of the locks quickly turn sour, the door stops creak and require lubrication. The age of the machines is most felt in the cabin. If it was not over-tightened, then by 200,000 kilometers, and this is a typical mileage for cars before restyling, no matter what is on the odometer, eco-leather peels off in the door cards, automatic transmission handles, and on the sidewalls of the seats and the central armrest. The steering wheel often looks worn out after 120,000 mileage, but this is rather an exception to the rule. In most cases, this is not a bad steering wheel, but the mileage is wound up by 100. Restyled instances have a more elegant texture of the front panel and especially the center console, but the glossy finish scratches much more than the classic gray Korean plastic. The climate is not good yet. It does not work very intelligently, but it does its job. Unless the air conditioner radiator is frankly weak, the lower parts of the condenser peel off and lose their honeycombs after our snow salt slurry. The electrics of Korean cars are quite reliable, at least until the age of 10. Apart from not very successful door connectors and rather weak fuses, which can cause minor troubles, there is literally nothing to complain about. Of course, there are breakdowns, but a break in the heating of the seats or a breakdown in the motor for folding mirrors are only nuances of operation. Nothing serious dies, at least not yet and often enough.